Hi, this is Brent Dunn from PPC Mode, and in today's video I'm going to be teaching you how to both install and use OpenVBX. Now what OpenVBX is, is a free IVR tool that is self-hosted from the company Twilo. Now the tool is free, however you still will need to purchase local or 800 number phone numbers to be able to use this service. The other thing that you will need is a hosting account with your own web host to actually install and host the software. If you don't have a web host yet, I highly suggest you go visit namehero.com with the link in this video and go ahead and purchase a reseller hosting account because that's what we'll be using in this video. It's extremely cheap and it's powerful enough to be able to do everything that we're going to be doing with OpenVBX. Now, once you have successfully purchased and got your web hosting up, what you're going to want to do next is go to openvbx.org or use the link on the screen and you should end up on a site that's similar to this. The only reason I say similar is because they might have changed the website since this video. Now, if they've done that, what you're going to want to do is just find anywhere where it says download. So how the site currently is set up is the download button is in the top right. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and click download. Now the current version while filming this video is 1.2.2 and what we're going to do is we need to make sure that our web host has these requirements. So as I had mentioned we need a web server, we need my SQL 5 plus and PHP 5.2 now once again, if you purchase this from Name Hero, this isn't going to be a problem. With other hosts, you may have an issue. Just send them a support ticket and you should be able to get everything that you need. But finally, we will also need a Twilo account. So we'll go ahead and set that up later in this video. So while we're on the download page, what we need to do is go ahead and download the zip file. And after it's successfully downloaded, what we'll want to do is go ahead and unzip the files. Alright, so here we are, and what we're going to want to do is open up our FTP client. The one I'm currently using is FileZilla for Windows, and you're going to want to log into your web hosting FTP uh, account. And once again, you can get these credentials on your web hosting provider. So, first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that you're in public underscore HTML folder. And what we're going to do is create a new directory called OpenVBX. Click OK. And we're going to go into the directory of OpenVBX, take the files that we unzipped, and go ahead and drag those over to the new folder that we created on our server. Now, this is going to take a bit of time, so I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video so you guys don't have to watch it sitting here just uploading. So now that the files have successfully uploaded to our web server, what we're going to want to do is visit the domain name that our web hosting is connected to. So for example, what we're going to do is I'm going to go to mindfiller.com slash open VBX and we're going to click enter. And if everything uploaded correctly, what you should see is this screen here that says one check server and we're going to, we can see that we have a lot of the things required, but we are missing a few things such as ABC or APC rather and memcache. But the memcache is optional and so is APC. So what we're going to do is go ahead and click next. And what we're going to need to do is log into our cPanel account at our hosting provider and set up our MySQL database, which is where the data for OpenVBX will be stored. So I went ahead and logged into my cPanel account and what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to click on the MySQL database wizard button. So once we click on that, it'll first ask us to create a database and so what we'll just do is name it OpenVBX, click next and we need to create a user and so I'll just call it Twilo 
and we're going to want to generate a password. So make sure that you copy it. Click I have copied password to a safe place. Click use password. We're going to click create user and we're going to want to allow this user to have all privileges to that database and then go ahead and click next. And as you can see, we've completed the task. We've created the user mindfill underscore Twilo, and then he's been added to the database mindfill underscore openvbx. So now what we're going to do is go back over to where it says config, configure database. And what we're going to do is we're going to get first paste in the password. And we're going to copy the user information, put in user, and then also copy the database information. Go ahead and put it in there. And once you've successfully put in your database credentials, go ahead and click next. And this is the part where we're going to have to set up our Twilo account. So to go ahead and set up Twilo, what we're going to do is click on your dashboard and it'll send us to Twilo. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and click sign up for free here and go ahead and go through those steps. And once you successfully created an account, you're going to then want to log in. So once we're logged into Twilo, what we're going to see is our dashboard in Twilo. And what we're going to want to do is go into the top right and click on Show API Credentials. And as you can see, we have this Account SID and this Authorization Token. Now, what we're going to do is go ahead and copy our Account SID and go back to our installer page on Open uh, BBX and click paste and then what we're going to want to do is go back and grab our auth token and we're going to click on view it's still going to be blurred on this because i don't want you guys being able to see it but you should be able to see your token go ahead and copy it and then go ahead and click paste on in the twilo token and click on next now where it says options we can set up a email address where OpenVBX will send us emails on notifications. And so what we'll do is we'll just set up a email here. It can be whatever you want. Then we'll go ahead and click on next. Now this is where we're going to create our OpenVBX account information. This is how you're going to log into your OpenVBX account. So the previous account that we created was for Twilo. This is going to be the actual login for the software itself. So what we'll do is we we'll go ahead and enter in our details here. And once you've successfully done that, go ahead and click on install. And as you can see, once you've successfully clicked install and if everything went well, the installation is complete. So now we can go ahead and click on login. So we'll enter in the details and click on login. And we are now inside our OpenVBX console. So once in our OpenVBX console, you'll notice a big green bar at the very top of the screen saying that we need to upgrade our Twilo account. Now what this means is, is we need to go into our Twilo account and add our billing information when you click the upgrade button in your Twilo account. Once you add the billing information, it will charge, I believe it's 10 or $20, so you have credits in the system. And what these credits allow you to do is then when this button right here where it says get a new phone number it allows you to generate a new phone number with whatever area code you want or you can generate a toll free you can generate a toll free number as well now each of these number numbers cost 
a different amount of money. I believe the local numbers are a dollar a month, and I believe toll free is three dollars a month. These these prices obviously may change, but that's the reason why you need the to upgrade your Twilio account. Now, before you even upgrade your Twilio account, you can create a test number so you can go ahead and play around with the software to see if you actually like it. So what I'll do is I will go ahead and create a 816 area code phone number and click add number. And what it's doing is it's connecting and to Twilio and it just ordered me a phone number. So now what I can do is it allows me to set up a call flow. And what a call flow is, is what you want OpenVBX to do once a call is made to this new virtual phone number. So this new virtual phone number is 816-656-3950. So if someone calls it, nothing happens right now because we haven't set up our call router. So what we'll want to do is, as you can see on the right here, there's these voice applets. So for example, if we wanted it to just be a simple forwarding number, we would go ahead and drag the dial over here. And as you can see, we have these different options. Who is, when someone calls this phone number, who is it going to dial? And then what is it going to do if that person doesn't pick up? So what we can do, for example, is just put in a phone number here. I'm not gonna put in a real phone number, but obviously when you put a phone number there, then it would dial that phone number once you click save up in the top right. Now the other thing that you can do is, is you can change the caller ID on what shows up on your phone when you're dialing, or sorry, when you're getting a phone call. So for example, say that this dial phone number was your phone number, you could set up the caller ID to either be the person calling the phone number, or you can also set it up to be the phone number that they're actually calling. And the reason you'd want to do that is a quick way to check where the call came from if that's how you're tracking it. So for example, say that you had this particular phone number on a a billboard or something, you could quickly look at the caller ID and in your contacts on your phone, you could have it say, you know, billboard on X, you know, whatever street, and you'd quickly be able to know that that billboard is generating this particular call. And now at the bottom, as you can see, it says, if nobody answers, what's going to happen? So we can go back over here and we can either make it hang up, we can make it try and dial someone else, or we can make it, you know, leave a voicemail, do an SMS, or even do a greeting. So just to make a very quick example of this, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and drop it in the voicemail. And now you can see that we can now collect a voicemail from the person that's calling the phone if we are not able to pick up in time and you can the prompt that the person calling that phone number will hear you can either read the text like a robot you can upload your own voice into an mp3 file you can either even record it using your phone and the choose library button is to choose previous ones that you used in the past now as you can see you can do a lot of different stuff with you know using different timings and stuff like that We'll go into more details on how to use this OpenVBX in a lot more details for both your local business or any local regen business in the future. But this is, once you've gotten to this point, you can at least use your virtual phone numbers and start to see how an IVR is actually very helpful for you.